one, I have the amazing Holly Bourne with me today because guess what? She wrote another book. I did another one. Yeah, <laughs> I did it again. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's called What's a Girl Got to Do? And it is the third one in the Spinster Club trilogy. So this one is Lottie's story. So catch up, guys. <laughs> And you were actually with me when I had the idea for this one. Oh my god, yes, let's talk about that. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> so, I had to pitch the trilogy to um, Usborne, um, all in three, all, all three books in one go, but obviously mm-hmm. books take a really long time to come yeah. out. And so Lottie originally was going to fall in love with a soldier who died. Oh wow. Um, okay. And yeah. then... Which like, is actually quite a bummer of a story. <laughs> Compared to this. Yeah. Compared to like now, that's quite like a funny book. And then we're about to go to the book fair. And then, and also the war ended. And I oh, kept yeah. going, it'll be fine. We'll start a war with somebody else. There'll be another There'll war. There'll be another war. <laughs> we really like them. And then there wasn't another war. And they were like, okay, we need to take this book that doesn't exist to the book fair. And there's no war. So have an idea. And I was just at work with you. And I was like, yeah. I need an idea for a book. <laughs> Yeah, we were just like, I need one right now. I have to send it over to them. I was like, oh God, what's happening? And then it turns out okay. So, so what was the idea? What is the, what is this book? La 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 la. So this book is about a girl called Lottie who sets herself a feminism project where she has to call out every single instance of sexism that she sees the moment that she sees it. <laughs> like uncontrollable um and it sounds like an impossible task (laughs) and it's sexism against men as well as women Mm -hmm. and she films it and makes it into like a youtube campaign and it goes viral she has like a fog horn and cream pies yeah so she cream pies yeah patriarchal things (laughs) and yeah she's got a massive clown horn that she honks in lessons we should have got one (laughs) they're really Uh, hard to locate uh, 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 uh. i'm sure we can find an app (laughs) sexism sexism (laughs) one of the things that like crops up in this book that Lottie does like a big speech about because she's a very intelligent young lady is um cognitive dissonance yes it's my favorite word this year 2016 it's cognitive dissonance yeah so cognitive dissonance is having two like beliefs at the same time that contradict each other basically being a hypocrite yeah. Um, so an example of cognitive dissonance in action is like when you really, really rush to get to a yoga class because your schedule's going to be late. And like yoga's supposed to be yeah. like all chill and zen. Or um, one that I have is, as you probably know from working for me, I don't particularly approve of weddings in the wedding industry. Um, I just find them really problematic and the way that women are just, you know, the whole wedding is judged and how perfect it is. And yet like in the moment a wedding album drops on Facebook, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> get out a cup of tea and I'm like I'm gonna go judge this <laughs> what I want the book to show is that we're all problematic we're all hypocrites like we are trying especially in feminism you're trying to fight against all this stuff but you're also living with all this stuff and so you're always gonna trip up and get it wrong yeah there are so many things that I'm constantly like questioning myself being like is this something that I genuinely really like and I want to do or is it society and culture and the patriarchy telling me that I want to? And it's so hard to try and figure out which one it is. Wouldn't be a great conversation about feminism if we didn't talk about boys. I know. Yes, it is. There's a really great just... boy character in this. Yes, Will. Will. Will the filmmaker. He's my type. But also, <laughs> I'm very much Lottie. When I, I know when I was writing, I was just like, Hannah is going to really fancy this character. <laughs> I really fancy this character. Yeah, I thought he, he might. <laughs> oh, oh well. But, um, yeah, he's a he's a tricky character because he. I wanted to show not only Lottie having like her feminist discovery in her campaign, yeah. but this idea that how do you change somebody's mind? Because at the beginning of the book, he's like, "I've yeah. never used the word feminist." Yeah, I'm not a feminist. I yeah. believe in equality. Even if he's a good guy. Yeah. And but so it's like, why is this good guy not coming aboard? So it's like, how do you go about trying to? Get men onto the feminist train. <laughs> Choo choo! All aboard! Not doing that. <laughs> don't do that. Really? Like, I thought that would work. <laughs> I laughed out loud, like oh, at various yeah. points, but one of my favourite moments was so Lottie's getting confused about her feelings for Will because on the one hand she hates him because he's arrogant and he's not a feminist and he thinks he's better than everyone, but on the other hand, 
he's just really attractive. <laughs> he's just really hot. I know, and really like arrogant, and that sort of arrogance. Like that you're confidence. Like, oh, you've learned how to play this game, and it's yeah. working. Yeah. My favorite thing is just being inside Lottie's head of her like back and forth of like, I hate you, but you're so hot. Like <laughs> and all of this, and it's the funniest thing. And there was just this one line where she was like, Oh, it's such a burden always being so like in touch with my loins. And I was just like, Yes. Lottie, you get me. <laughs> and I just love that you use the word loins. loins. I use my word, the word loins in every book. Yeah. It's like a stamp. It's my favourite word. <laughs> Remember at uni, we read, um, in first year, we had... Sorry, I'm just laughing. I love the word so much. <laughs> <laughs> and um, in first year, we're all catered. And every other Tuesday, um, you could get loin of cocks. <laughs> Another thing I wanted to talk about was intersectionality and feminism. Because through, like, this series the spinster club you've kind of like tackled different elements that can like affect feminism or like that can affect you as a woman so like the first book is about mental health and feminism yeah. and then the second book is kind of like more of a traditional love story in feminism but also about like family relationships yeah. and then this one is just like straight up we're just gonna hit you in yeah, the face with shot feminism. The feminism. <laughs> this one in particularly is it's the most feminist because I hope that I've built my readers up over mm, the other okay, books. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you know, so they're sort of all, we're all, all on the same page now. And then I'm really trying to empower my yeah. readers, and Lottie's trying to empower people to be like, we can't cover it all, but like, go start your own fires. Like yeah. your voice counts, your experience counts. You know, like we have your back. And kind of, and she talks about the feminist duvet, where it's like if everybody's working on their own little... Yeah, everyone you know, sews a little quilt. Duvet. Yeah, I guess quilt's probably quilt. better analogy than a duvet. Yeah, everyone but, um, sews their own little patch for the quilt. Yeah, so I couldn't deal with all of it. Um, it was so much I couldn't cover, like, class, mm. um, sexuality, uh, physical disability, I kind of dealt with mental disability yeah. in the first, but, you know, sort of... And race. And, race, yeah. and just all the sort of things that I wasn't able to quite touch on as much as I could, but at the end I've written, like, a letter, and I'm just... And we're getting other young people to start their own spinster club, so hopefully, like, together we can all... Do that. By no means is Lottie perfect. There are so many things that she did and said that I was just like, oh. Yeah. But obviously, it's not, I wouldn't then say, like, that makes her a bad feminist. Yeah, and that was the other thing. Like, but also, she's young, she's like 17. Yeah, because they're teenagers. And then also, it was a bit like this idea of perf being a perfect feminist to me is sexist in itself. Yeah. Like, we don't, you know, just like look at male prime ministers and be like, they are perf- they have to yeah. be perfect before setting the side down. Whereas, like, I think because most feminists are female and we're so good at like attacking fe- females that like their- even feminism plays into that. And so sometimes when it's like you've not done this, you've not done that, I'm a bit like, look at all the things they are doing and all the things they're trying to do, and I'll just give a bit of credit. I always call it like the feminism high five. Just like, <laughs> like initially be like, yeah. well done, you're doing like you've chosen to fight rather than just like roll over. That's great. That's scary. High five. Instead of rolling over. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it does feel like better to roll over. Yeah. And so it's like acknowledge that and then be like, okay, now I've got your attention. Can we maybe have like a really nice, friendly, open conversation about how potentially you've missed this bit out or that yeah. bit out and kind of have it in a really positive environment. Another thing that I really want to talk about because this kind of ties into kind of what I do and what a lot of my viewers do is that because Lottie's campaign is online. Yes. And it goes a little bit viral. Yes. And then there's a lot of hate. Yeah. That comes along with that. And like, uh, they get they, really sad thinking about it. it yeah, <laughs> no. I definitely like had a couple of tears at points in this book. I guess it's kind of like the importance of self-care and activism you can't save the world every day and yeah. like sometimes it is okay to just switch off and watch a really problematic film on netflix <laughs> you know? and just be like i hope they get together at the end yeah you know? i always think that you should always be at the top of your pyramid you know and like because you're not going to be any good to anybody if you're not healthy you uh, know okay, and just sort yeah. of you know anybody being mentally unhealthy is it's going to have a ripple effect. So I think it sounds selfish, but I don't think it is. In the Samaritans, for example, if they're having a bad day, they can't answer phones. Yeah, because, because they're not going to get to help people. Yeah. One of the most annoying pieces of advice when it comes to like online hate and stuff is being like, well, just don't go online then. And it's yeah. like, no, because... I should be allowed to. You should be allowed to. Like, this is like my space. This is, you know, like I shouldn't be like kicked out of my own like Twitter. Can we talk about... You wrote an article recently. Oh. <laughs> No, I did. You... I did. It was when I really. It was yeah about the charity work that I did for. Yeah, work. and it was an article about rape. Yes, and then 
you left the internet <laughs> yes. for a few days. Two weeks. Seriously, was it two, two weeks? weeks? Yeah. <sighs> How was that? I, I was like, by the end of two weeks, I was like really like different person. Really? I was just like, oh, I'm just all right. I had no idea what was going on in the news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, I felt quite clean and pure and like like not cluttered. So it was quite good in the other yeah. way. But obviously, what had caused me to come off the internet was not good. And it was just mad because literally, what I was saying was I worked for this charity and I saw sexual violence and it's bad. Like those yeah. were the only things I said. Yeah. And yeah, that solicited all sorts of horrible things something needs to change I don't know what it is I don't understand technology enough but like that needs yeah. to like, it shouldn't we need to like reclaim the internet I think that's like people are coming back it's like people used to be like reclaim the night yeah. uh, you know women should be allowed to walk around at night time and not be scared of it and I think it's like you should be allowed to have an opinion and a, you know a twitter profile are you a blocker? I just literally hide I'm such a really? coward I'm so not like Lottie, so it's um, so like the moment like something goes out to the ether and then I start going, and it gets like you know when it gets retweeted out of yeah. your bubble and you're like you're like oh, oh. <laughs> you're like bollocks <laughs> like I literally just do this <laughs> just I'm out <laughs> but like I have a brain that doesn't treat me as well as I would like it to mm. so I'm just like okay self protect so it's not yeah. so I just go into self protective mode and just it's like you know when um, Hermione was when in the last Harry Potter book of course we're gonna get to Harry yeah, Potter yeah okay now we're talking about Harry Potter yeah. <laughs> When they land in somewhere new in the last book and she puts up all those defensive yeah. spells, like, that's what I'm like online. So, like, okay, the moment I goes yeah. in trial, I'm just like... Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> what do you want people to know about the book? Do people need to read the other two? They don't need to read the other two. Mm. So, the books um, are standalone, so you can pick up one of them. I mean, they do... It makes... It's better if you read them in order, but you don't have to have read the others. More than anything, I try to make it funny. Yeah. And I like read, funny. and it might just make you think about stuff along the way but more than anything it's just you know girls having fun being really good friends to each other and just taking the piss and having a laugh and like feminism can be that it doesn't have to be like when is it out holly it's out on the first of august the day after the cursed child play thanks jk <laughs> i would highly recommend it i've, oh, I've already read much. it and that's wonderful so sweaty so sweaty <laughs> <laughs> so sweaty. This is serious. Right, okay. okay. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Definitely check out this book when it's out and go follow Holly on Twitter. Go make yeah. her internet space nice and friendly. Thank you. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And let us know in the comments about um, your favourite like YA feminist books that you've read. Because there are so many out there that like I don't know about and I would love to find out yeah. some more YA feminism. And don't forget to subscribe because I make new videos every week. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.